Hello, what's up? Check this out. This is not a slider. I repeat, this is not a slider. This is the oxygen taps element. Today, I'm going to show you how to set up an oxygen taps element that auto plays and stops when you hover, but resumes when the mouse is out. Now, for those of you who are in a hurry, you already know how to set up the taps element like the regular taps element. I don't want to watch the whole video. You just want to come in here, pick what you want and go. I'm just going to do you one better. I'm going to tell you what to do in less than five minutes. You can set your stuff up and go. So what you have to do is to wrap your taps and your tab content inside a div and then give that div an ID of tab wrapper and then drop a code block and copy uh, the CSS code that I'm going to link in the description and then also uh, copy the JavaScript code that I'm going to link in the description. Uh, that's all you need to do, nothing else. And your tab is ready. That's, that's all you need to do to get this. Now, for those of you that want to know how this was done, we're going to take this right together. So I'm going to start by adding a section and inside that section, I'm going to add a div and that div is going to be a tab wrapper. I'm going to call it tab wrapper. And then I'm going to give it an ID of tab wrapper, tab underscore wrapper. I'm going to drop the oxygen tabs element. And I want my tabs element to have four tabs. So I'm going to go into the tabs and just uh, move this and make that number four. I'm going to change the number to four and I'll have to increase um, this tabs content also. And then I'm going to change that to four. I'm going to select my tab wrapper and set the width to 100%. And then my tab content automatically fills in the width. And I'm going to select my tab and go to the tab class. And I'm going to go to layout and set the flex grow to one and the flex shrink to one. And for the tab parents, I'm going to set the width to 100%. Uh, you can see that it's going to throw this off a little bit. So I'm going to select this and clear that value. And this is going to fill it in. I'm going to select the tab content and I'm make sure I'm selecting the class. I'm going to set the minimum height to 500. Sorry, I have to select the class. Set the minimum height to 500 pixels. And then I'm going to give it a background color. Just want to give it a nice purple background color. Something like that. And uh, I think I should add that color to my colors. I'm going to still select that, make sure I'm on the class. And I'm going to go to typography and set it to white. And I want to set the font size to, let's say, 3 rem. How about 5? And I want to set the uh, vertical center center. So uh, that is going to apply to all of them. And for the tab, I'm going to make sure I'm on the tab class. I'm going to set the, the background color. It's not going to be purple, but something like that. And then I'm going to select the active class and give it a background color of that purple. And let's go back to the tab. I'm going to set the typographic color to white. And I think I'm okay with the size of the font. And then I'm going to lay out the flex control to be center. So we have that. I'm going to select the tabs parents and then I want to give it just a little gap. Uh, I'm going to just write gap uh, one rem. I think one rem might just be a bit too much. So I'm going to just make it 0 0.5 rem. And for the tab, I want the, the tab not the tab active. I want the typography for the tab to be, yeah, to be that. And then I'm going to select the tab active and change the typography to white. So uh, that will be that color and you just alternate like that. Okay, so we are done setting up our tab. Let's just apply some responsiveness to it. I'm going to select the tab, make sure I'm on the tab class. And then I'm going to go here. I'm going to go in here and set the minimum width to 40 percent and then i'm going to go here and set the minimum weight to 100 uh, percent it should be in percent so we have 40 percent 100 percent as you can see it's um, going out of the container i'm going to select the parent container and allow wrap so 
we have that. So I just want to take care of the, the, the responsiveness. I'm going to save that and I will check the front end to see how a tap is doing. Okay, so we have a tap set up and it is um, completely responsive. All right. All right, we are done with setting up a tap design. Now we're going to go into the code. I'm going to uh, add a code block here. And so uh, I'm going to call that uh, play, play tab code. And then uh, we'll go to the PHP and comment that out. The first thing I'm going to do is, so I'm just going to paste the JavaScript code and then I'm going to explain what the JavaScript does. So we start by declaring a couple of variables. So we have speed and we have set that to 200, which means two seconds. Uh, for the speed, we're using milliseconds. 1000 means one second, 2000 means two seconds and so on. Now we, we have another variable called the counter and we set the initial value to zero. Now we are, we're getting a table wrapper, which is this table wrapper here. And then we're getting the tabs, which is each of these tabs. So we are using a query selector all and we're getting it from the default oxytab class and then we're getting the tab class this is different from this this gets the element the html element but this just gets you know we are just getting the class name of the tab so we're calling it tabs class because we want to use that and then we have the table content which is did i call it table tab contents which is all these tab contents and then we have another variable that we are going to use to check if we have hovered on the tab or not and we call it is mouse hover and we set the initial value to false meaning it is not being hovered so we are adding an event listener to the tab wrapper to check if the mouse has left the tab wrapper and we set the is mouse hover to false but if there is mouse hover we set is mouse hover to true and the next thing is we're going to look through each of the tab and we're going to get the parent of each of them which is this one now the reason we're getting the parent is because we want to get the position of this tab in the dom so you the first one is the position is zero the second one the position is one the third one the position is two and so on and so forth so it's called the index of the element so we're using the parent to access the children and get the index of the tab and then when we get that index we're going to add a class to these tabs and we want the class to be named after the original class of the task, but we're gonna add uh, the index number plus one. The reason we are adding plus one is because we don't want to start with oxytab zero. We want it to start with oxytab one. Now, let me show you what is going on here. So um, we have this tab, and you can see oxytab is here, oxytab is here, oxytab is here, oxytab is here. Now we want to add another class that is called oxytab one, oxytab two, Oxytab 3 automatically, it doesn't matter the number of tabs we'll have, it was going to automatically increment that class. So once we run this code, it's going to add those classes. Now the next code here ensures that uh, the autoplay is going to resume from its current position once the mouse leaves the tab wrapper. So for instance, this is what we have. So once the mouse is over here, it's not playing. So once we finish, when we click and we finish clicking, now when I leave, we want it to move to the next one, okay? But without that code, if I click, I click here, for instance, if I leave, it's gonna jump and start from the beginning and doesn't feel natural. So that code enables the autoplay to resume from the, you know, the current active tab. Now we're gonna write the, this function takes care of the tab, you know, autoplay. So uh, we call it autoplay tabs. And the first thing we do is if we check if the mouse is hover, on top of the uh, tab wrapper, then we are saying return. We, we mean don't run this function if there is mouse hover on the wrapper. And then we take this variable that we assigned a value of zero to, and we increment it by one. So at the first time that this function runs, the counter value is gonna be one. And now we, uh, let me skip this now. Now the counter value is gonna be one. Let me move all the way to here. We're gonna have, uh, a function that calls this autoplay tab at intervals. The interval is based on the value we gave the speed. So if we gave it 1000, 
it means it's going to call this function every one second. If we gave it 2000, it's going to call this function every two seconds. And each time this function is being called, the counter value will be increasing by one. So the first time is going to be one. The second time is going to be two. So it's going to keep calling. Now we want a situation whereby if the counter value becomes greater than the number of taps, we want to reset the counter back to one. That is why if it finish counting all the way to the fourth one, it's going to return and, and start again from the first one. Now the next thing we want to do here is to set set an active tab. Uh, we are selecting the active tab. Now the elements we are going to be selecting is going to have this class and this uh, is going to be dynamic because the first time this function is called, what will be the active class will be oxytab1. The next time this function runs, the active class is going to be oxytab2. So depending on the counter, the next time it runs, the active class is going to be oxytab3 and so on. And then for each time this function runs, we're going to perform a click action on the active class. That is why you are seeing this work like this. So the first time it runs, the second time it runs, it clicks the next one. The third time it runs, it clicks the next one. The fourth time it runs, it clicks the next one. And then when the counter is more attempts to be more than the number of the tabs, it resets back to one and continues. Once we're done with that, we add uh, an event listener to determine whether the content of the page is loaded. And then we call this function, which therefore calls this function. And that fits in everything we have done and starts playing. So I'm going to uh, comment this one out first, and I'm going to uh, save this. And we are going to take a look at our tabs. It's not going to play. We want to see if we have any error, no error. And then I'm going to check this tab. So you can see we have those tabs and you can see that this has oxy tab one, oxy tab two, oxy tab three and oxy tab four. If we add any other tab, it's going to automatically increment oxy tab five, six like that. So it is automatic. And now, um, the, uh, so we'll let, let's run that function. Let's, run that function. I'm going to save this and then I'm going to refresh. Let's see if it's going to start playing. So it starts playing. So we see that it's, it's, you know, it's selecting the active tab and then it's clicking it. So it's playing. That's good. Now let's see if I mouse hover, if it's going to stop. So I mouse hover. So it stops. I click, it changes. And then if I mouse out, it continues to the next one. So that is what we want. The next thing we want is how do we get this cool animated effect? That is based on the CSS that I have written. And all you need to do is to get that CSS and paste it here. So what I did was normally the oxygen tabs, uh, the hidden tab is set to display none. So that's why you don't have any animation. But what I did was I overwrote that and then I gave it, I made it to display flex. And then I set the opacity to 0 0.5, translated it, positioned it absolutely. Now, so to position that absolutely, I had to position the oxy tabs content relatively and set the overflow to hidden so that when it is sliding, the way it's sliding is not going to slide out of the boundary of the tab. And um, then I, I go ahead to set the transition delays you know i reset this this some of these values here in the oxytab content class and then um to get the content to animate in once the tab slides uh, what i did was i selected all the content inside the oxytab content and gave them um, a final value and then for the hidden i select all the content and give them an initial value so they animated from translate y to translate y zero and from opacity of zero to opacity of one. And then I set the transform property, uh, transition um, for the transform and opacity, and then the transition delay. Now the delay is so that it, it waits for this, um, the tab to finish entering before it animates in. And with that, I'm going to save and then let's refresh and see if we have that animation. All right. So we have that animation running. And that's all that we are going to learn today. If you like this so far, please hit the like button. We are going to take a look at how to change these tabs to accordion on mobile. So as you can see, we're going to take a look at how to have this type of uh, 
you know tabs where uh, on desktop it is a regular tab and then on mobile it changes to this accordion uh, type and this is based on the oxygen tabs element it's not a custom tab this is an oxygen tabs element so we're going to take a look at that in the next tab tutorial so have a great day hit the notification bell so that you will be notified when the video comes out i'll see you some other time bye